Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own MB Epic. So let's get straight into the build process. We're going to use this bottom plate first. We're going to use our 12mm spacers. Don't get them mixed up with the shorter spacers that are used for holding the arms on. Using a 2mm Allen key screw, you can now attach these spacers to the plate. Your bottom plate should now look like this. The remaining holes that you see are for the arms. In your kit you will find a power distribution board. You can solder the ESCs to this. It doesn't matter which side you solder them onto, it's totally up to you. I went with putting positive on the A side and negative on the B side. Also at this point you will want to add your cable for your battery power supply. I'm using an XT60. You will also notice two small fin wires. I'm using these as extra power supply cables to go up inside the quadcopter to power any video transmitters that I'm going to use. Because carbon fibre conducts electricity, you will want to cover over this power distribution board. You can do this simply by using some tape like I did. Or you can use some hot glue or liquid tape, it doesn't matter. In your kit you will find these very long screws. These are the screws that are used to hold the arms on. Push them through the bottom of the plate like you see here. Then using a piece of tape, put it onto the back to hold them into place. This just stops them from falling out when you flip the board over for the next stage of the build. Now you can place those four arms onto the screws which you've just put into the bottom plate. Now using the shorter spacers in the kit, place them over these screws. Do this for all of the arms. Now let's arrange our speed controllers onto the plate. Now we're going to thread these cables through that centre hole on our second plate. You may be able to notice on the second plate that I've already added the rubber isolation dampeners and the blue stopper posts. You will see that the long screws that hold the arms go up through this second plate. Now you should have your four ESC cables, your one power cable for powering anything on board, and your battery plug cable. Now that the quad's taken shape, let's add these nuts. These nuts will go onto the screws that have come through that second plate. All four corners should now look like this. You can now remove the tape that was holding these screws in place. Make sure that the arms are now nice and tight. Now that that's done, use the 2mm hex screws to screw through the top plate into the spacers. Now we're going to add our main plate. This is what's known as a clean plate. This actually sits on those rubber isolation mounts, away from all the vibrations from the motors. As you can see, I've already started putting the large spacers in. I've just got to add three more. Again, using those two millimeter hex screws, just attach them onto the frame, as you can see. It should look like this when it's done. A lot of people like to customise the colour of their quad. A handy thing to do with these posts is actually to add heat shrink on. You can get heat shrink in many different colours. 
So you can simply slide it over, put it and heat it. And voila, you've got colored posts. This clean plate simply places over the blue stopper posts onto the rubber isolation mounts. At this point, it's also a good idea to thread those ESC cables up through the holes in the plate. Here you can see how these rubber mounts get rid of the vibrations and the blue stopper is there to stop it from falling off should you have a crash. Just add four of these bolts to stop it from coming loose. I actually swapped mine out for some nice chrome ones that I had in a box. Here I'm adding the cap to the stopper. It's just a small donut washer with a 2mm hex screw. You can see how this plate will work should you have a crash. The plate will lift up and the stopper will stop it from actually coming off of the rubbers. You should now tighten these nuts down. As I mentioned, I swapped my nuts out for some nice chrome nuts. Here you can see the dirty plate that will have vibrations and then our clean plate that sits on top of the vibration mounts. Here you can see how the stopper will work. So as you can see I've threaded the ESC cables through here and my extra power cable and I have my battery cable just sticking out the side. All that's left to do is add the top plate on and that's the basic frame finished. But to completely finish this we need to add our flight controller and screw the motors onto the end of the arms. The flight controller of choice for this quadcopter is the Naze 32. The one in particular that I have here is the Acro version but I'll be putting the PIDs down below in the description. So that's all for this detailed build video. Stay tuned as we'll be setting up the Naze 32 and going out for its maiden journey. Thanks for watching guys.